Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bartholomew Dean. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Anthropology and the Director of Public Anthropology here at KU. Um, I'm here joined uh, with my colleague, David Robbins, who is the Bud and Sally Cray Professor of Medicine. And he's also the director of KU's Diabetes Institute. Um, today, we're going to speak a bit about our, our research in the Peruvian Amazon. Here you see the city of, of Yurimaguas, which is a large booming city, port city located on the Huayaga River. Another view of the downtown, a bit like Massachusetts Street uh, here in Lawrence, Kansas. Here's some images of some of the individuals, wide spectrum, tremendous cultural diversity, uh, six, seven, eight different indigenous groups that live in this region. Here is image of Peru and more specifically, exactly where we're working, which as you can see is in the thick of the upper Amazon. Again, Yurimaguas, roughly 100,000 people, quite an old city established by the Jesuits a number of centuries ago, known as a major commercial center with all sorts of urban bustle, but again, located in the middle of the Amazon. Why the Amazon? Well, number one, there has been limited, if any, research on diabetes in the Amazon. This is a region of incredible genetic uh, flow, and there's a few studies that link uh, the environment, genetics, and migration to this issue of metabolic syndrome. Just a bit on the history, the historical context. As many of us know, this is an area that has a long colonial impact. More recently, a few hundred years ago, it was known certainly for rubber, and much more recently for oil, and some of us know lumber and for cocaine. And I'm going to turn over the floor now to my to my esteemed colleague, who's going to talk about some of the goals, primary goals of our research, which looks at the genetic architecture of type two diabetes. Thank you. Thanks, Bart, and thanks for allowing me to participate in the symposium. Um, the uh, the explosion of diabetes among indigenous people in the United States is well documented with uh, some of the tribes having prevalence rates of up to 70 to 80%, all of which has exploded in the last 50 to 70 years. Uh, so that uh, we were fully expected that despite the literature saying that there was very little, if any, diabetes among the uh, Amazonian peoples, we suspected that having come from the same genetic um, uh, ancestors of 10 to 15,000 years ago that, uh, that there would be a similar uh, pattern. So our goal was, uh, at least for this pilot study, was to establish a foothold in the community and to develop partnerships, but ultimately to understand uh, both the uh, environmental changes and uh, the interaction with the uh, genetic susceptibility among this population. Next slide, please, Bart. Well, we trained um, a, a very enthusiastic group of uh, student nurses uh, to do the examination and they performed almost flawlessly with great enthusiasm and expertise. Um, I'm the tall one to the left and the short woman to my right with the arrow on her head is a woman with uh, diabetes of about 12 years demonstrating the phenotype that we saw down there, which is uh, tends to be thin with a young onset of non-insulin dependent diabetes, very different from what we see in urban America. And as you move to the right, uh, Giuliani, Giuliana Carmago, um, a postdoc in nutrition, um, was uh, really instrumental in developing food frequency and helping us set up the examination. Next slide. Uh, the methodology had six basic elements. One was to find out what people are eating, uh, to find out how, uh, how much fat and lean body mass they were, develop something called a body mass index or BMI, uh, to develop blood markers uh, and to bring blood back for some specialized analysis and genetics, to learn about uh, where they lived and what their relatives, who their relatives were, their health history, and to begin to develop a family kinship so that we could look for genes that are passed within the families. Next slide. So the, uh, the genetics of diabetes is a puzzle. Um, if you have an identical twin, it's uh, 75 to 90% likelihood that you will develop it, meaning you have the same genes. Um, however, uh, when you do a large genome-wide study such as was done uh, in Iceland, 
um, where 110,000 people were examined, they uh, found that only about 3% of the risk of type 2 diabetes could be accounted by some 120 genes that had a weak association in large populations. So it's still very much a mystery. Now, the process of finding these genes has really uh, had a revolution that was started here in Kansas, thanks to Michael Crawford, who really developed the methodology of using family and um, uh, in association with genome-wide screens, which was a much more powerful way than doing population-based. And Michael was a um, <clears throat> critical uh, member of our team and helped us write the grant and interpret the data. Next slide. Um, the previous publications, if you look back, really states flatly that there is no diabetes among the Amazonians, uh, whereas the recent reports suggest an alarming incidence, a very similar pattern to what we have seen in the American Indians from the 1950s, where there was absolutely no diabetes and now it's rampant. Here is some of our preliminary results. Uh, we examined 168 uh, people, predominantly women of a convenience uh, population. Uh, only 40% to 44% of the population was non-diabetic. Uh, some 35 to 23% were diabetic. And in pre-diabetes, which um, predicts about a 50% conversion of diabetes within five years, was about a quarter to a third of the population, suggesting that indeed this uh, population is, very, uh, is approaching a very rapid uh, growth of the curve towards uh, diabetes as we've seen in other indigenous populations. Next slide. Uh, and as I said, the phenotype of diabetes that we were struck with is uh, thin and early onset. You can see the Kukama man who is standing uh, next to me up in a holy tree who's had diabetes since the age of 30. And myself um, uh, on, on your left, uh, who has a BMI of 26.3 and a normal hemoglobin A1C being non-diabetic. Next slide. So uh, why so much diabetes in the Amazon? Well, we know that the, the susceptibility gene probably came from Asia. Um, and uh, uh, there is, however, environmental uh, issues that have brought out the phenotype of diabetes. Uh, not only obesity and changes in activity, but uh, particularly relevant to Peru would be oil drilling and oil spills, heavy metals, pesticides, spill off from cocaine uh, production. Um, and a variety of endocrine disruptors, which may be in very high concentration in the area. And I strongly watch you, uh, urge you to watch the Netflix uh, documentary called Dirty Money. There's been a radical change in, from the traditional diet to what we call a soccer ball of rice now, um, has replaced traditional foods and a much reduced physical activity. Next slide. So um, the... Uh, the, the hypothesis that we're, we, we are testing is that there have been lifestyle changes, migration patterns, degradation of the uh, traditional lifestyle in conjunction with uh, genetic predisposition that's accounting for this apparent uh, change in the prevalence of diabetes in the Amazonian populations. Next slide. So uh, while the study is in its, uh, its earliest stages, we were very encouraged that we uh, uh, partnered with a very capable group of paramedical and medical professionals who carried out the exam rigorously. Uh, we demonstrated our ability to collect blood, safely transport it and analyze it um, from this remote area. Uh, we had uh, very eager uh, partnerships with the indigenous the leaders of the indigenous people to come back and help them and really have set the groundwork for a much larger study and look forward to um, increasing the partnerships elsewhere. And I think that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. We look forward to any comments. And again, thank you.